Yeah. So, uh, hello everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us once again. And we have the discussion today with the uh, panel uh, the, of students and graduates from the IM Calcutta One Year MBA program, that is the MBA X program. So, uh, the agenda here is today to discuss about you know what is the process like, what is the program. what are the value additions that you get and a lot of people are joining the one year mba programs for the career transitions so these are people who have planned those career transitions they are coming from that background and uh, we have a huge diversity today on our panel so we have mr sumit who is an uh, i am calcutta graduate and uh, we also have uh, mr sayan mukherjee mr uh, govardhan so these uh, and uh, mr ronak so they are going to uh you know just join the campus very shortly and thank you for taking out the time to interact with us uh, right so let me just hand it over to sumit because i think he'll be traveling uh, very soon so sumit uh, are we audible can we have you on uh, screen hi ma'am how are you i am doing well how are you i'm good ma'am i'm good Excellent. so hi team how is everyone uh thanks okay. we're good या सो अपॉलॉजीज एक्चुअली आई एम एट द एयरपोर्ट राइट नाउ तो थोड़ा सा पीछे नॉइज आएगा रियली सॉरी फॉर दैट बट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट सो माय करियर जर्नी टिल डेट एंड ओके सो बेसिकली आई हैड अराउंड एट इयर्स ऑफ वर्क एक्सपीरियंस प्रायर टू द आई एम कैलकटा एम बी एक्स प्रोग्राम एंड पोस्ट एम बी ए नाउ एज ऑफ नाउ आई एम वर्किंग विद फ्लिपकार्ट इन ऑपरेशन so uh, i am the cluster manager here and i'm handling fulfillment center and mother hubs which are the sortation centers uh, for gujarat and madhya pradesh cluster so that is in brief uh, my overall profile as of now uh, working with flipkart is an amazing journey uh, it's a very steep learning curve here and it's amazing and uh, why did i choose one year mba and especially the one in india is because uh two reasons uh one is i wanted to follow uh some entrepreneurial journey post mba with some work experience down the line in india itself and uh, e-commerce uh seemed like a right choice and flipkart seemed like a right choice again so that's why i chose india so with sufficient experience probably i'll venture into something of my own and let's see how that pans out uh, apart from that i am calcutta ka journey uh, was phenomenal uh, i think one thing that sets apart i am calcutta from any other institute pan india wise is you have a lot of freedom there and you have a lot of freedom to explore other opportunities you have a lot of freedom to network build good bonds with your batchmates with other people on the campus and see ultimately mba is more or less about two things right one is your knowledge and one is your network and i am calcutta will provide you enough time space opportunity to dwell on those opportunities and then build a solid network when you pass out so i think that's why my one year entire journey you know it as i as as i recall now it was like a flash of a second kahan chala gaya pata nahi chala but the professors are amazing the cohort was brilliant and uh, you'll fall in any of you and the ones who are as of now will be joining the campus soon the second or the moment you step inside the campus you'll fall in love with the campus and i think it has a very positive effect on you during the, your entire journey at the campus thank you so, so yeah. i yeah, yeah i was there uh, you know i was on the campus a few months back and i could really uh, relate to what you mentioned about the campus and the environment that it gives and what about you know the uh, experience on the in the front on the front of the curriculum or you know different the way the curriculum is designed or the program is designed what does that give you as a take away okay so uh, curriculum wise i would say uh, i am calcutta uh, 60 to 70 percent is more or less very similar to what A and B or ISB is doing as of now, and again, it's very similar to what a two-year MBA program does. Uh, apart from that, uh, the flexibility uh, for your electives are higher in your one-year MBA program, 
with special focus on data engineering data analytic analytics ml uh, specific models for marketing and finance as you all know ki i am calcutta is famous for its uh, uh, finance electives it's a finance uh, focused uh, mba program and therefore uh, your curriculum and the professors and the electives and the opportunity specifically in that direction is humongous so uh, they have modified their curriculum in line with the market requirements and i believe one of the positive things about that is that a lot of people come to these programs from non tech background and uh, once you move into the industry more or less the applications of uh, i would say again ai ml models and other data analytic models are have become very necessary and this is especially when imc is excelling is they have really blended uh, uh, the tech curriculum with their existing industry knowledge and experience perfectly well so that you can easily relate to it how you could have solved those problems in your previous experience or past industry uh with 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 the new knowledge that you have gained in uh, particular electives or subjects that you have so i think it's a perfect mix and blend uh of old concepts that are essential <laughs> but also the new technologies and again new concepts that are needed to survive in any industry as of now right uh, amazingly uh, helpful insights and uh, one uh, one last question actually you had a very uh, you know you had a very drastic career transition post uh, this mba program and a lot of people have the uh, you know they are apprehensive of whether they'll be able to get their desired outcome after the program so what are the things that they need to go in with and what are the things that they need to you know keep in mind during that particular one year to be able to achieve their career transitions okay uh, firstly i think uh keep a mindset that anything is possible really so i along with a lot of other of my batchmates have uh i i think 180 de- saying 180 degree transformation or transition is less uh but anything is possible just keep an open mind once you enter the campus uh, take 3 months or so to you know get used to the place get used to the rigor uh post that figure out what you really want to do and where you want to go and accordingly start taking those electives interacting with the professors uh industry mein jo uh, especially the people uh, you you will get a lot of opportunities to interact with a lot of industry experts uh, uh network with them network with your batchmates and then probably uh direct your career or rest of the 9 months at the campus in that direction and once you are out of the campus i think uh, you would have fulfilled the desire or the requirement why you came to that imc would have been fulfilled so i would again say don't hesitate uh, any career transition into any stream or industry is actually possible uh, be it tech be it consulting be it operations or be it marketing anything is possible even for corporate roles general management roles everything is possible so just enter with a open mindset and uh, but make sure that once you get into the campus within 3 months you should know what you want to do and then they just get into it that's it okay right. thank thank you so much so uh, we have a uh, 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 viewer here she is spruha so she is asking about what is the admissions process after gmat so spruha the admissions process after gmat requires you to f- uh, fill an online application where you will have to submit one sop that is around 500 words in length and along with that you need two letters of recommendation so again the whole online form plus the sop plus two letters of recommendation is what you submit to the school within the deadline and post that once you are shortlisted you go in for the interview so for the interview process at i am calcutta for the mbax program you right or do not have any vat uh, requirements you just need to go in for the interview with the admissions panel and uh, that would be led by the by a panel of uh, the alumni as well as the professors or uh, only the professors as well so it depends on who is available at that particular day i hope that addresses your question and uh, people who are uh, you know with us today feel free to ask your questions we'll be taking them up as and when uh, you know we get a window 
right so we have uh, mr govardhan with us and he has uh, you know around 9 plus years of experience in the it sector so govardhan please share your story with us you know how did you choose and why did you choose the one year mba program and what was your experience of the application and the interview process at the uh, i am calcutta one year mba that is the mbx uh, program so let's let's wait till he can join and in the meanwhile i think sign uh, you could take this up so 9 plus years in your in the power sector is uh, where you are coming from and uh, what are the choices that you made and how did you go about the application and the interview process please yeah so i would go to start with the second question uh, so so with the audience out here probably so my experience has been so uh, so it was an i i was i was coming with a nine years of experience and my entire experience from the very beginning has been into sales business development and bid management kind of a role so while i uh, so while i have been quite successful in this sector so what i felt was going forward i needed to have a more holistic understanding of the business if i wanted to move to a more senior leadership position and to do so i feel, what i felt that the best way probably will be go through a structured process which probably an mba program can give you uh, so and in a very short span of time with the kind of a business cases that you solve with the kind of network that you may develop and kind of the other subjects that you all get to study out there in the campus so that's how it began with and so the, the way to do it was i wrote the gmat uh, I, Uh, last uh, that so this year uh, around no last year around in the month of july and then started my application process as far as the application process goes so i the ma'am has already elaborated on the process itself and how is it so when once i so when i was given the gmat i had it thought that i would pr- probably get done with the gmat and that would probably the end of the road and then i in the application process i can just fill it up and probably apply to the b school and i didn't have a much of an idea so my decision was all of a sudden so i thought that let me cover the first step and then will if things come go come well then i would think about the second step so that's how it was so when i looked into the sop and everything what i felt uh, so at the very beginning it felt to be overwhelming because you do uh, where there's a one sop and two letter of recommendation you need to bring about your story uh, to the to the to the admission committee and with the word limits and everything i thought, and you, i was unable to probably understand which stories because you are it's a 20 year life story some professional some personal journeys some learnings so how do i structure it how do i probably frame it and within the word limits and everything so in that way i thought the best would be to get a professional help who have an idea and have gone through the process so that's how i reached out to goal isb and so and what pam helped me is structuring my thoughts uh, also helped me to revisit my entire journey in the professional and personal life and to, to, to take forward what has been my learnings what stories should probably i should take forward to and replicate and show it to them admission committee so that my the my the my the application looks up uh, to, to be one that can be selected forward and that's how it was excellent and what about the interview process at uh, you know imcal so how was it and what was the panel like what were they looking for when they were interviewing you yeah so uh, so the, uh, for, as far my panel goes uh, it was consisted of three members so there were two professors and an alumni so uh, so so they would go through what what they expect is uh, whatever you have written across the sop what are your goals what has been your life journey so they asked uh, they would be asking a uh, sort of a questions on that and on that front also i would say while the sop you write is of 500 words so what the application process when i went through we gone through an extensive range of questions so probably all of that was didn't came in fit into a 500 word but what it helped me was while i was going through it to sort of understand how the journey has been through to revisit what a journey has been through in terms of learnings in terms of tangible skill sets that probably i have developed which i can probably take it forward to when i go into the into the into an mba program and also what are the expectation i have so everybody comes in want to do an mba but probably expectations are not very clear and to be very honest nor was mine so so those so those while the entire process helped me to figure out on those fronts and and that is what they would expect from the candidate only 
so they while it's we want to go with they want us to go with an open mind but at least we should also have an idea what were we kind of an expecting from from the program what are the skill sets we bring into the class in terms of value addition and those things were explored apart from that what uh, what they do ask is that they expect us to have some industrial knowledge so and, and our viewpoint on certain policies or regulations that has come forward to and that was asked to me and they asked our my viewpoints what are the alternate viewpoints and those things were discussed so that's how it was and i am calcutta adu as usually comes up with certain mathematical questions so they they would expect you to revisit what you have done till probably class 12 or 10 and they would ask certain questions on those front so around 10 15 minutes on those as well so that's how the interview was but it was a candid one so it was a, on a very lighter note so and it, that's how it was great thank you thank you for sharing i think we have govardhan back he is connected now so uh, uh, so please uh, govardhan go ahead and share your story you have a huge amount of experience in the it sector so what brought you to the one year mba program and uh, you know how was your experience on the application and the interview process i think he still having issues with the uh, audio so uh, Mr. Ronik, uh, I think you have. Uh, are we connected? Hi, ma'am. Yeah. So, hi, Ronik, and uh, please share your story. You have around six plus years in the PSU sector and uh, planning to take up a one-year MBA. So, what brought you to the one-year MBA, and then how was your experience of the application and the interview process, especially with the I'm Calcutta MBAX uh, admissions process? we can't hear you on in case you are uh, communicating okay we'll wait for them to join once more and in the meantime uh, we'll just evaluate all the other options that you know one has one you when you are applying to a one year mba Uh, for executives in india so within india you will have the option of joining the ima pgpx you can apply to the i am bangalore epgp program i am calcutta mbax program of course the isp pgp program and i am indore epgp as well as i am lucknow ipmx program so these programs uh, they rank on the ft ranking for 2023 they are all there and they are doing well the alumni are uh, you know able to achieve their goals and uh, in case you just uh, look at the requirements the im programs versus the isp program i think the main difference is the average work experience of the class and the class size so given you know in what conditions or in what kind of an environment you like to uh, you feel you would be most comfortable in learning that is probably a choice that you need to make within choosing amongst these programs otherwise the value addition that these programs have uh, is good for uh, career transitions as well as career growth both so uh govardhan and ronak we are waiting for you please tell us whenever you have joined uh am i audible ma'am uh, right. okay please govardhan you can go yes govardhan you can go yeah, first please you, yeah yeah so yeah i have nine years of ex- it experience and i have been a software developer and i have worked with multiple clients uh, for a utility client i worked for audit application so during my interactions with the uh, with the clients uh, there was a lot of business knowledge which i had to accumulate uh, for de- for designing the applications so this uh, this made me interesting uh, this made me interested in the business end of the products so that's when i realized that uh, after 9 years i have uh, sort of hit a glass ceiling from tech point of view so from there on i wanted to pursue a, a path in the in the from the uh, like out outside of tech like more on the business end so that's why i thought one year mba would be the right fit for me so the first step was uh, the, the preparing for the gmat and crossing it so once gmat was done then i realized the the next step as uh, uh, as shayan has uh, just mentioned right so that's when i realized there is a lot more to that um, post that one step of gmat there, there is uh, the process of uh, the statement of purpose which we need to write recommendation letters and all this so so that process what also a little bit of challenging on how to uh, showcase my skills and what i have done the challenges i have faced and all 
so i took um, shruti madam's help for all that and showcasing what my deals were, um, and how can i uh, show myself the, how can i show what my skill sets are right Yeah. and then the interview pro- interview came in i had two panels uh, two professors in, in the panel uh, and one of the uh, one of the professor was asking mostly on the tech only so if in my in my case he was asking about the uh, how cloud uh, how microsoft was you know profiting on the cloud what was what what's their uh, secret behind it i think some such such matters and the other panelist was, as i was, was also asking me on uh, questions like basic maths uh, just like sayan as well so that was my ex- overall I, for me the the interview experience was little uh, i would say no, i mean i was little uh, tense at that particular interview session but overall it was good right and you had a very interesting uh, questions uh, that were asked to you right in case you do remember those um, regarding the probability and this yeah so it was a, a particularly uh, tricky puzzle question with, with probability so i remember i i give half of the answer because i didn't remember the math at that moment so i gave half the answer that i i wasn't even uh, sure like what what how would the result be until i got that you know r1 results i was um, i was a little bit uh, tense what what would the outcome would be for that the other question on the tech uh, so, so it was the question like how how microsoft was um, was making so much profits in uh, cloud because uh, i was in the same uh, field i knew how how i w- like I, i used to follow microsoft how they how the cloud platform azure was working and how they were profiting from it so i was able to answer that so what was uh, how they were uh, you know op- open source how they were uh, the cl- their cloud platform was for giving out license to the open source uh, to establish their products on the cloud platform and when i gave this answers so i was i was able to uh, go to one pat- uh, panelist the other panelist yeah the questions with max that was the one uh, which caught me off guard right so uh, we have anjana here and she is asking if the ar- curriculum is um, helpful to someone who wants to move from a clinical role to healthcare consulting so in case uh, somit we are still connected you could pitch in on this and uh... yeah hi so uh, definitely i would say that because you already have the 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 typical answer is you already have the technical expertise you'll gain the business knowledge uh, during the mba program and hence you can make that transition but i'll give you a live example uh, we had one of the doctors with us in our cohort and uh, post mba he got into he got into uh, boston consulting south east asia team and i think right now he's in indonesia and he's doing great so he's actually into healthcare consulting uh, and working with one of the top three consulting firms in the world so yeah it's definitely possible excellent so anjana i think uh, this answers your question the curriculum is definitely uh, helpful and the experience as well so you have a live example as well so feel free to ask any further questions struha here has asked if the lor should be uh, from ex colleagues or managers so over here uh, you know it is a call for you to take you need to decide as to where you uh, whose lor will add the maximum value addition to your application if you feel that you know your manager uh, you can get it from your manager and they have a good visibility of your work then i think one of your recommenders to should definitely be your manager ex colleagues could also refer uh, just in case you know they have the information and the visibility of your work to uh, really add that uh, input to your uh, application so see what you know helps you make a strong application and that is i think the uh, the answer that you will have for this question uh, feel free to ask any further questions please so we have one more panelist uh, mr ronak and he has around 6 plus years of psu experience so ronak if you are connected so we would like to hear your story as to why you chose the one year program and what was your experience of the application and the interview process at i am calcutta the one year mba mbx program let us know when you have pitched in so we'll come back to this then so the admissions process again there are three cycles you will have three windows which will be uh, which will open up you know usually starts towards the end of june and uh, these three cycles will be independent of each other so once you are applying in one cycle you cannot apply to another cycle uh, in the same application year 
and i am c mba x program only accepts the gmat scores so then you have to submit an essay that like we said 500 words and two letters of references and spruha says if what if we don't have anyone to write an lor i'm presently not working as i was laid off uh, would that hurt my application so probably not i don't think that is something that you need to worry about you can always go back to your previous organization and your previous managers and you know uh, discuss this out with them that you are applying to this uh, program and and i'm sure you've done uh, great work and they'll be happy to uh, you know um, give you the letter of recommendation just in case it is an anomaly of any sorts then you can always you know connect with the admissions team to see what would be the ideal case that will help you to justify your application but most of the times not being on the same job it is fine you can take it from any previous organization as well i hope that answers the question so guys you have all been working professionals so gmat preparation as working professionals is not an easy task to handle so what are your tips and strategies you know things that worked for you for uh, preparing for the gmat as well as what is a good timeline for professionals to you know start working on their uh, gmat as well as get done with that and then start with the applications as well so in case uh, sumit you would like to take it up first mm, i think the only answer to that is if you really want to get into a good college you'll have to create some bandwidth and uh, work on it because see ultimately your job definitely has a lot of higher requirements related to your time and again bandwidth but again if you really want to get done with the mba and get this one of the lifetime one of the kind of a lifetime experience you'll have to burn midnight oil you'll have to wake up till morning you'll have to take some leaves and uh, shruti ma'am will help you throughout the way she is a phenomenal partner in this entire journey and uh, i think that's the only way to do it right thank you sayan and govardhan if you would like to share your um, gmat preparation you know the way uh, you handled your uh, the gmat prep itself what resources are helpful what timelines and what is a good schedule to have i think um, the as far as the timelines and cons- concern i think it's quite subjective so it might add it varies from person to person so for me it was around uh, four, around four and a half months or five months of a timeline that i took for it so and so i think um, definitely as uh, sumit has told so you you have to uh, put some time off and have to work for it if you really want to crack it and i think the best way uh, the thing that worked for me and it's for and especially for working professional who has been out of the academics for quite some period is that uh, getting getting into the habit becomes a quite challenging so so i think the i think the one best way is probably to to try to at least irrespective of how much time you are putting in but at least devote at least some time every day uh, so rather than uh, trying to uh, so hang on for around 10 hours on a weekend probably and then not touching the books for, for the over the next 5 days i think that's uh, the uh, the way probably we try, try to take go about the things but probably that is not the best way and i started with it and i learned from the failure so probably to get to around 2 and a half hours each day for around 4 to 5 months i think that to is expected to work out fine so that's how i will put it so and so that's how it is so probably <coughs> fathers can probably pitch in and give out the yeah. governor you managed a pretty high score so tell us uh, the recipe of success for the gmat preparation so in- initially the first step would be that take, take the mock exam see where we stand uh, after getting the score and then there is the fundamentals of in every uh, like in max um, in in grammar and everything so you need to understand the fundamentals thoroughly have a co- proper grip on it solve simple questions first first with 300 to 400 and then go more on to the next uh, next set of uh, next set of range of questions so for me it was going uh, i just went through that uh, gmat uh, 2020 book twice just uh, solving everything on and all and testing myself every weekend weekend all all the time so as as uh, sign has said it's always the consistency solving a, a couple of questions every day and uh, maintaining the discipline of for uh, for the time span you have it's it's, it's again it's subject to each person it differs from person to person 
so that's how i did it and actually covid has also helped because we were doing a lot of work from home so that was also uh, it, it was a good thing one good thing which came out of it so the averages have really hiked you know during covid the average gmat score we've seen it going from 600 680 to 700 then 720 then 750 people are um, getting great scores and definitely thanks to covid so a few uh, things about the mbax program that we have there are 25 compulsory courses that you would take around um, uh, you know across six terms and then around 15 electives that you will have across three terms and uh, in terms of international exposure you have the international immersion which is scheduled at the excess uh, sorry essex uh, business school as well as the mannheim business school so the current batch we could not have a lot of them uh, we do, could not have them currently because they are off to their internal in this international immersion programs right now and there are a lot of events being a ceo leadership series latest at the annual conclave and the vista series so so much in case we are still connected you could share your experience of being on the latest committee so uh, you know how are the events like and what is the total exposure in terms of uh, when you are on this uh, campus for the one year mba program okay uh, unfortunately i think there will be a lot of background noise uh, am i audible yes okay. we can hear you uh, yeah so uh, yeah there are a lot of committees uh, basically there are two types of committees one which are hosted by one year mba program and the other ones are which are hosted by the two year mba program so ranging from marketing to consulting to operations and uh, then you have uh, your uh, tech and business conclaves such as one is lattice which is hosted by the one year mba program so uh, hosting the lattice is uh, challenging uh, especially when we were doing it uh, just after covid restrictions were easing uh, down so we had a lot of challenge in that but apart from that i think one of the best part of hosting such an event was that we had an opportunity to invite a lot of industry allwards for uh, speaker sessions and debate sessions and hence that helped us in connecting one to one and building a good network with uh, top ceos and uh, top key and business people and uh, i think we the latter committee are still in touch with a lot of them and they have actually provided us uh, with a lot of guidance regarding our career and other aspects of the same uh, apart from that there's a lot of fun involved in that we had we hosted i think a few of the stand ups there are great parties at imc that everyone there will love it so all in all uh, these committees these events will actually keep you pretty occupied throughout your entire journey and give you a lot of exposure uh, to knowledge specifically to the kind of career transition that you are aiming for and of course the opportunity to interact the, with the people who are already in that industry or profession great and since you you know you are a, a graduate who's been there done that so what are the suggestions uh, you know from your end for the people who are entering the program now you know what are the things that they can do in the next few months before they enter the program in terms of getting preparing for the career transitions or preparing for a, you know strong value add from the program itself uh okay any courses so, in finance or you know whatever you would suggest yeah so definitely finance i would say because as engineers they struggle a lot during the first term and uh, so although uh, before i think april april end is i think when the session starts so prior to that uh, i am calcutta will reach out to you and provide you with uh, specific uh, courses on specific subjects but uh, definitely get into some basic accounting courses understanding the balance sheet definitely how to read an annual report of a company uh, apart from that if you are from non tech background please get a good hold of uh, 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 cloud computing in general how does the cloud uh, uh, cloud migration works for the companies which are shifting from legacy computing to cloud computing and uh, a basic understanding of data analytics and machine learning so i think that would be shin and also please hone your 12th standard math skills because integration differentiation and 
such kind of concepts come in handy in term one and term two, where you have a lot of subjects on data modeling, uh, where these skills are skill sets are needed. Thank you. And uh, Spruha here asks, I have six years of experience in working as a content strategist with B two B SaaS startups. And what is the ideal GMAT score I'll need to get into IM or ISP? So you know the ideal GMAT score. There's actually nothing like that in terms of uh, the whole bandwidth of GMAT score that is right now here on the campus. Uh, sorry, on this panel discussion, there's a huge range always for all the schools. Again, a lot depends on what your undergraduate scores are like. If we assume that you have you know slightly above average undergraduate scores, then you can uh, just look for a target score of. around the average of the school you know try and stick uh, around the school average for whatever is your target score or go slightly higher than that i think that much is more than sufficient for you to put up a strong application again there are other aspects of the application that you need to work on so always plan your attempts or reattempts on the gmat with the time that you have on hand to put up a strong application as well so you know we don't uh, think that a 750 or a 780 is the gmat score that goes uh, that gives you any guarantee of getting into any so ideal gmat score is whatever you can score best try and be around the average of the score uh, which the school has and if you can go slightly higher than that nothing like it so uh, sayan in case you feel like adding something to this question i think um, <coughs> shruti ma'am is the best to give advice she has been handling a lot of students over the years and have a lot of experience over what he has seen across so i think that uh, completely addresses what she is asking yeah, so for. go with the best that you can do and then probably consider and go backwards as to seeing what what schools are and what are within range and what are out of range but a, a lot of things are considered by the school so don't limit yourself on the gmat alone right so uh, the next question that uh, you know is the most important or a lot of uh, that has a lot of value add when you are deciding on a school is what is the placements uh, process like and what are the uh, placements that have been delivered at the school so far so if we look at the mbax uh, program placements it has been majorly dominated by the it sector and uh, the consulting sector comes next and then is the e commerce sector so if you have aims of getting into any of uh, these sectors then this is a good program to look at in terms of the average salary the uh, average salary at im uh, calcutta has been around 36.79 lakhs that is for the 2021 22 intake again averages are you know across a whole range so go with uh, an open mind look at getting that lateral shift that is the most important apart from that the numbers are of course available uh, at all the places some major companies which come to the mbax program are uh, microsoft clean max amazon flipkart and uh, BCN. So these are the companies which are hiring from the campus. Shruha has a follow-up question. She says, "If I have uh, low undergrad scores, does that reduce my chances?" I will not say that uh, does reduce your chances entirely, provided you are able to work on the rest of the things. So try and look at a higher than average GMAT for sure. And then, if you have a good story to talk about, and uh, you know, put up a good strong application, I don't think that should be a big, a very big limitation. again it all depends on you know how you're putting across the whole thing yes but one thing for sure if you have low undergrad scores try and aim for a higher than average gmat score for the school that you are targeting anjana has a question how many math how many months prior to the deadline should one start working on the essays and lois i think sayan sumit and govardhan you are the best people to uh, tell about your experience as to what is the idea time according to me i think that at least have around 45 to 60 days in hand so that you can think you can you know always always provide for some lags as well you can take a day off and you are not rushing against timelines so if you have that much time that is good enough but again open to science umit and govardhan to share their insights please i think uh, my suggestion would be also something around this so around uh, th- uh, 40 to 60 days would be th- sort of an ideal time so at least 30 days so when i completed the gmat uh, so the r1 was uh, just around the corner i think around i had around 15 20 days left and also there was certain medical emergency from my side so i couldn't go about it but after that i felt it was a right decision even if i would have rushed and done so probably 
my application wouldn't have been so comprehensive the way it was and more than that when you were doing the application probably you can fill up a 500 words and can uh, submit it but also there is uh, when you are filling the application a lot of a uh, preparation goes into the interview because you are revisiting what are the skill set what are what are you looking for and all those things so if you give enough time it also builds you up for the interview process as well so keeping those in mind probably my as my experience goes it would be around 30 to 40 days time that one should keep in hand right sumit and govardhan in case you would like to add something to this yeah i would agree with that uh, sometime same timeline great so i think uh, anjana you can keep at least a you know a timeline of around 40 days to 60 days depending on how busy you are with your work uh, work engagements and uh, that should be a good time to start working on the essays and lors so and this brings us to almost uh, the last uh, part of the discussion is is the i am executive mba worth it so the first point over here is that this is no, actually not an executive mba it is an mba for executives so when you apply to this program what were your expectations from the program and what are the criteria that you think are evaluate you know important to evaluate the program as a stand alone entity to apply to and what kind of career growth should you expect when you are applying to it so in case uh, you would like to go first sumit in yeah i think i'll just drop off in a second about to go off please connect with me separately i'll definitely help you all Yeah. Sure. Sorry. Thank thank you for joining. So, Sayan, it's over to you. What are the criteria that you think were you know important for you to evaluate and uh, you know un- understand as to what value you will get from a program that you are applying to, especially the IIM Executive MBAs. No, I think uh, so. As I said, uh, my expectation was that while I do have developed my expertise over certain uh, fields that I am working for. but what i wanted is to have a more a better sense of a business knowledge and in better terms of overall how the business runs and i think so when you are working so while you can learn also while you are working those things but the thing is that it usually you do not get the scope so probably you are limited to certain uh, to certain things that you are doing and you do not get the scope to think beyond it or get the positions to work on those aspects probably why to you are aspiring for so an executive program i think gives you a structured way to look into those aspects so you go to number of courses where you have your uh, the cohort which is coming from different functional and the uh, functional and also from different industrial background you can learn from their experiences what they share while they are in the campus along with you uh, work on thousands of uh, some business cases and also th- that i think would help me to develop an holistic understanding and probably uh, so uh, from a short run and a long run basis it would a uh, long run uh, uh, process it would probably give you a platform where you can launch pad yourself to what you were aspiring for and then take it forward yes so govardhan please share your thoughts on you know how did you feel that the i i am executive mba is worth it what are your expectations from the program and what are the criteria that are important to evaluate when deciding on a program so for for me uh as from the from the day to day work work point of view there are there are challenges which we face but there's a real life challenges and we get very little opportunities uh, uh when you want to solve them or fa- face them so i mean there are only f- a certain number of challenges you can face in your in your particular work of work and you might uh, there are some challenges which you might ne- never come across in your whole career itself and these things are m- uh, more on the pre- real life but whereas in mba i believe Uh, that we get to uh, have the case studies where we get to study uh, the, the what uh, the many challenges there are there are all be, have to been face have been solved and how to solve them and we get suggestions from the peers from the professors on uh, how things sh- should be handled and the second thing is uh, the interactions as sain has said with different uh, people from different domains which you never which will never happen in, in the normal career right seen so for me there were two ch- uh, two choices ahead either it was go through the uh the career the get up the corporate ladder go to the next level and the next level and promotion it's a long process but rather i i i chose mba uh, because this gives me one year of time it, it's a sort of uh, sort of shortcut to understand the business um, you know face some situations which i would i ideally won't you know, face in real life in career 
and actually get it get to interact with other uh, people from other domains as well right so this i thought this will be the i'll get my um, return from this path rather than the normal uh, going through the office office and uh, promotion after promotion yes because this really shortens the path for you to you know work around in terms of getting a lateral switch getting to the management uh, career path so the program is ideally designed for you to get career transition then the stories are you know innumerable so there are so many stories which you can always uh, refer back to so uh, yeah so sumit has uh, suggested that in case anybody has any questions they could always connect with him you could get in touch with us we can also connect you with sumit for any questions so uh, the programs the one year mba programs they are ideally designed to help you fast track your career and shorten the you know the path to achieve your career growth in terms of a management uh, career so spruha has one question that if i want to start my exec mba course next year when should i give my gmat so i have tried to address that and i think uh, for the 2024 intake that means um, you would be joining the course in 24 uh, march april so by then if you want to go to the r1 so r1 deadlines would be somewhere you know starting in uh, by the end of june till the end of august that will be the window for round 1 so you should ideally be done by may or by max by june mid or end so that you can you know happily plan your application and work on the essays in time so again depending on when you plan to uh, which round you want to apply to so try and you know keep it at round 1 or round 2 and uh, just back calculate keeping around 45 to 60 days for your application because you might be putting up multiple applications simultaneously if uh, we look at the timelines i'm a b and c they have uh, their deadlines very close by and isb would be somewhere around you know 10 15 days here or there so that becomes a lot of work to handle at the same time and what's the difference between round 1 and round 2 so round 1 of course it starts early and it ends early and it is the first uh, round of the year again the whole application cycle is a clean slate the school is open to looking at applications round 2 happens when round 2 uh, the round 1 intake has uh, been announced the admits have been given that is when you you know you will parallelly be applying to round 2 so round 1 uh, ends by around august end and round 2 would end by around somewhere around october end the difference is that applying early will definitely give you an advantage but you should always apply when your application is totally ready so when you have the right gmat score you are sure that yes this is the best that you could you know get and you have uh, dedicated ample time to your application as well so that is the time that you should go in don't uh, worry with you know amongst which round you should go in for round 1 or round 2 just look at your individual preparation in case uh, you know sayan and govardhan you want to add to the choice between round 1 and round 2 how did you choose and uh, what were the things that were important when you decided on the timeline of getting done with your gmat so i think i uh, i do not have much to say about it so I, it was not a very planned way that i choose round 2 only what i what has been what i have read across the various channels is that either you should try to do it by round 1 or round 2 Uh, so that is what it is preferred and most of the seeds get fulfilled by in round 1 and round 2 so that's how my, my target was so how so i finished my gmat uh, i gave my gmat around 20 days before the round 1 application ends so it got delayed actually for me i was planning to do a bit early but my passport got expired and i saw it while booking the exam so i had to reschedule my exam by another 20 25 days by i had to get get my passport done uh, renewed so that's how it was and then i didn't have enough time for the round 1 application and thought i would go with the round 2 so that's my story goes so and accordingly others can also plan so preferably i think what i have read across is that round 1 and round 2 is the more preferred slot and i think also if you are applying to different b schools the the application fees also differs in round 3 usually the the price shoots up so from the economic point of view also if you can um, put forward your application in one two that would be preferred case right govardhan what are your thoughts in terms of you know round one versus round two and what is a good time to get done with the gmat so i would suggest the round one uh, it gives more time and even somehow you miss the deadline for round one you'll still have the round two 
but not to wait until uh, wait for the round 2 to you know uh, do your admission process and all so i would suggest yeah round 1 would be the ideal time to do it right so if you had to you know suggest um, two or three tips or uh, strategies for anybody who's just embarking on the journey people are right now just preparing for their gmat so what are uh, some uh, you know tips that you would like to share with them with respect to their thoughts on applying to the one year mba programs especially in india uh, sayan if you could go first so in terms of uh, the exam preparation or in terms of what they what they should the whole process what you think is important and you know what what they should be aware of uh, so i think uh, so as i said so uh, how my expectation was in, in tune of that if you do have an expectation and it is probably what you're trying to upskill yourself and probably as uh, things i uh, think yourself that you need to be better equipped and to face uh, the uh, upcoming challenges in the professional world i think and i think uh, this one year gmat program probably, probably gb school program probably prepares you for that and that is what i am looking for so you have an holistic understanding of the business you develop a good network you get uh, get your basics right so that has been a sort of, but my expectation for the program would be and if you have a similar kind of an expectation i think this is a right process because it, uh, it just gives you in a structured way and it also shortens your story for I mean, the timeline that you where you can get those expertise into so that is what it is as far as gmat is concerned as been uh, discussed so i uh, give around 3 uh, 4 to 5 months try to be uh, the regularity i i would say the regularity is this uh, is this so try to devote uh, some time to it every day and i think it will pay it, uh, and you will get paid off for your effort and then you can move it to the application process and that's how it is and you can back calculate as per the timelines that was discussed i think that is the uh, the standard timeline that uh, everyone takes um, and, and that it can it is little subjective can vary a little from person to person right and govardhan any tips and strategies from your end for the gmat preparation or for the application or the interview so from the interview perspective i would say that you would always have the panel panelists who have the no- domain knowledge from which from where you are so you need to be brush up your skills on on your domain because the questions will be coming for the same domain which you are in uh, from the G- gmat preparation i would say like uh, they uh, rather uh, for me it was like um, i had this excel sheet drawn up for the scheduling uh, to st- what to study on a daily basis that would be of help to and to keep our uh, progress a uh, track of the progress what you are doing on day to day so these two things which i can think top of my mind right so we have one question uh, one more question do you suggest any other materials apart from the official guide for gmat prep so since you people have you are more uh, well versed and fresh out of the cycle so please uh, give your suggestions on this i think from the material perspective the official guide is uh, is the holy bible so i think it covers almost everything however for as for me it was concerned while i stay for pre- the preparation was more from the official guide but uh, i was finding it difficult to probably get into an habit so i took a sort of a help from some there are various course tutorials available so more than the material how it helped me was to get built a habit uh, for sitting around daily and all those things so if you, if you can look forward to all there are certain certain reputed institutes were in assisting in terms of preparing for the gmat and uh, so and they they are i think most of them are means are close to each other so you can think of any one of it and join and really take a, take their help if you need right and govardhan what are your thoughts on the material uh, you know any other materials that you would suggest apart from the official guide for gmat preparation so, so for me official guide was the one i mean i solved it twice that's how i did it and other than that for basics uh, for understanding the fundamentals all, all I, i went to some uh, online um, you know classes just uh, which were at my like convenience whenever i could and i just went through them and used that for the understanding the fundamentals so that's all i could remember in that right and one more resource that i can suggest to you uh, stroha is that uh we have these uh, you know inputs from past admits in terms of gmat and gre preparation on this url you can always go there and you know find more resources as to suggestions from uh, past admits to different courses 
So one more question uh, is that uh, how important is JW and IR scores for the GMAT score? Some sources say it is not a part of the total score, and some say it is important. So what happens, Pruha, is that uh, every school they have their norm of considering the AW and IR. AWA we do feel that it is important for almost all the schools which are taking up the GMAT for the MBA admissions. IR score depends on the uh, you know on a school to school basis. So the best uh, source for answering this question for you is the school itself. So for example, we know for sure that ISP does not consider the IR scores. I am ABC. They uh, also I don't think they do consider the IR scores. B definitely does not consider the IR score. That is what I feel. A W A is definitely important. So it is best to you know get in touch with your target school and ask them this question directly. It will be very specific to the school itself. And one more preparation uh, tip in terms of the GMAT preparation is that you know people overlook the A W A preparation, and uh, getting a higher than average A W A score will definitely. Uh, boost your application at some uh, point. It is important that you get an above average AWA score. So it, it is uh, calculated out of six. If you have a 4.5 or a 5.5, there's a whole lot of different communication that comes across from this score. So pay attention to your AWA preparation as well. Plus, this preparation will also be important for your VAT preparation when it comes to the IM interviews. So the way you address and the way you structure your answers that will. Uh, in the AWA will also help you structure your answers and responses for the VAT preparation as well. Right. So this uh, we are almost at the end of our discussion, and I would like to thank Sayan and Govardhan for taking the time out uh, to connect and address queries and share your uh, inputs. Mm -hmm. And in case anybody has uh, any further queries, feel free to reach out to them on LinkedIn, or you can always reach out to us. We can connect you to them, or we can try and address your queries. And all the best for the application cycle going forward. And Sayan and uh, Govardhan, all the be best for joining the course. Uh, looking forward to having more conversations with you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We log off for today. Thank you. Good night. Good night.